On a sunny May morning, a humpback whale washes up on a quiet stretch of beach in British Columbia. Already dead, its body begins to expand from the gases building up inside. Slowly, the smell of decay begins to waft on the sea breeze, attracting all sorts of wildlife hungry for their next meal. The smell also catches the attention of Lorraine Lefort, a housekeeper working at a remote research station on the island, who's out for a hike. She breaks from her planned route and wanders onto the beach. Impossible to miss, the humpback lies belly up on the beach. Where did this whale come from? How did the animal die? And what would happen to the whale now? These are the questions that speed Lorraine back to the research station as she checks her watch against the coming high tide. From the end of one story comes the beginning of another, one that will involve dozens of people untangling the threads of a mystery, and one that will take almost four years to unfold. This is the story of whale bones. Humpbacks are one of the largest animals on Earth. Plying the world's oceans, these enormous animals eat some of the tiniest critters, and they are known the world round for their acrobatic feats and haunting songs. For all that we've learned about humpbacks, many mysteries remain hidden below the ocean surface. But to start, here's a little of what we do know. Dark gray or black in color, their flippers, measuring about a third of their body length, which is longer than any other species of whale, help them steer and move efficiently through the water, while their tail flukes help propel them. The trailing edge of the fluke and markings on the underside are like fingerprints, unique to each individual. Humpbacks are covered in patches of hitchhiking barnacles, as well as bumps on their heads, jaws, and flippers. These tubercles are unique to humpbacks. A low, thick dorsal fin on a raised hump on the whale's back is distinctive and can help identify individuals. These massive animals eat some of the world's smallest by filtering seawater using hundreds of plates of bristled baleen that hang from the roofs of the whale's mouth. Pleats that extend from their throats to their bellies expand with each gargantuan gulp. Like most mammals, humpbacks need to breathe air, they give birth to babies who drink milk from their mothers, and they have hair, relatively tiny, coarse hairs, usually one in the center of each of the tubercles on their heads. Found the world over, humpbacks can be seen both close to shore and in deeper waters here in British Columbia, including the waters around Calvert Island, where this story's particular humpback was found. Calvert is also home to one of the Hakai Institute's research stations, where scientists conduct long-term observational studies. So when Lorraine raced back from the beach with news of a dead humpback, Hakai knew just who to call to find out what caused this whale's death. The Marine Mammal Response Program, experts in tracking and responding to strandings. Which is how, just two days after the humpback was discovered, coordinator Paul Cottrell, expert veterinary pathologist Stephen Raverty, and field tech Taylor Lanehart end up stepping off a float plane armed with rubber gloves, waterproof coveralls, and very, very long knives. They find the whale lying on the beach, throat pleats and bloated belly exposed to the sky and to the field team's blades, which are poised to conduct a necropsy. A necropsy is an examination of a dead animal. Like an autopsy of a human by a coroner, one goal of a necropsy is to try to figure out how the animal, like this humpback, died. But another is to uncover details that tell us about how the creature lived, like the individual's age and sex, injuries that point to traumatic events, evidence of diseases the animal was suffering from, or toxins that had been absorbed, and other useful insights that help us better understand the species, local populations, and the threats they face. From the level of decomposition, the team estimates that the humpback has been dead for about a week, including any time the whale spent floating in the water before washing ashore. A quick inspection also reveals the humpback is male. 
measurements are taken. The whale's relatively short length suggests that he's a young juvenile, probably about one to two years old. Stephen cuts away chunks of fatty blubber and thick muscle to reveal the whale's internal organs. They're not where they're supposed to be. Instead of being nestled down in the whale's abdomen, they're squeezed up into his chest and throat. This could have been caused by decomposition and the buildup of gas after the whale died. But another possible explanation is damage from a boat strike. The approaching tide and the team's inability to flip the four and a half ton whale over to examine his back mean the necropsy is over quickly. But before they leave, Stephen and the team take tissue and other samples to try to learn more about the whale's health back in the lab. For now, all they can say is that this young humpback was in decent health when he died. Impatient from waiting on the sidelines, bald eagles cry their displeasure at having their feast interrupted, and as the necropsy comes to an end, they move back in. As always, in death, there is life. Often, when whales die at sea, their bodies will sink to the ocean floor and become a boon for deep sea crabs, octopuses, fish, worms, snails, and other scavengers. In the deep ocean below 1,000 meters, these whale falls, as they're known, can create miniature ecosystems that last for decades. And when whales wash ashore, not a single scrap of their bodies goes to waste either. Eagles, wolves, bears, and countless other animals down to the tiniest bacteria will spend months gorging on the whale's remains. But in the bellies of beasts is not where this humpback's tail ends. If the Marine Mammal Response Program was the Hakai Institute's first call, their second was to Mike DeRoos. Part scientist, Part engineer, part artist, Mike is a world-renowned expert in skeleton articulation, and he is about to spend the next three and a half years getting to know this humpback like no one else, as Mike readies him for an entirely new journey on the next episode of Whale Bones. Whale Bones.